Hi everyone, um, this is for Higher Biology and Higher Human Biology. It's a little video about the extended response question or questions. Um, this is a question that comes up in paper two. Um, in Higher Biology you get two extended response questions and in Higher Human you get one. They're worth quite a lot of marks and they're actually going to be using slightly different skills uh, from what you're used to in the National 5 Biology course. So hopefully this little video will outline how you should tackle these questions to try and get most marks. So the extended response questions appear in the second paper, because remember paper one is your multiple choice paper. And the second paper is often called the short answer questions. Um, however, the extended response is not really a short answer. Now, for higher biology, you will get two extended response questions. One is about four marks, that's quite a short one. Um, and the last one that appears at the end of the paper uh, can be anywhere from seven marks to nine marks. Now, higher human, um, you've only really got one extended response question, and it's usually eight or nine marks. But whatever tips I'm giving, giving you today applies to both the shorter question and the longer question. I'll start off by going through a few hints and tips, and then we've got one big warning for you to look at, and then we'll look at an example, and I'll go through the mark scheme and how best to access these available marks. So, hint and tip one. Read the question. You'll have been getting told this since primary school, but it's actually really, really helpful. Okay, right, only talk about what it asks about. Uh, I'm going to give a big hint away here, because um, this probably applies to the one you're doing this week. If it asks you just about DNA replication, and it does not mention the words PCR, don't talk about PCR, just talk about DNA replication, okay? If you give any extra information or go off tangent and start showing off your knowledge about something else, you're not going to get marks for it because you can only get marks if it appears on the mark scheme. So you've got to answer what's actually in the question. If sometimes you'll get a question in two parts, so they'll say, um, write notes under this heading and then write notes under that heading. Um, try and write your answer in two parts. If it's presented to you in two parts, lay out your answer in two parts. It just makes it easier for the examiner because in the mark schemes, the marks will be awarded in two parts. Pay attention to how many marks are awarded for each section if it is in two, par uh, two parts, because sometimes you might get three marks for section one and then five marks for section two. So section two should obviously be longer and have more in it. If there's no separate marks uh, given for the two sections, go with a 50-50 split or a sensible split. For example, if one of the things you're talking about is actually a really small topic in relation to the second thing, then just make a few points about the first bit and then save all your other points for the second bit. Use full names at least once and then use abbreviations. Don't just start using abbreviations. You might not get the mark. For example, if you're talking about uh, the base pairs in DNA, you don't say A pairs with T and G pairs with C. You've got to say adenine pairs with thymine. You can mention the word adenine and then in brackets write A and then throughout the rest of your essay just write A. That's absolutely fine. But at the start, you must use the full names. You can use diagrams. In a lot of the essays, diagrams will be helpful, especially if you're talking about the citric acid cycle or something like that. But if you use diagrams, you must annotate them and then you must also explain the points. You will not get marks just for pictures. If you label your diagram and explain what's happening in it, that's when you get your marks. Last one, really important, it's in red. I'm gonna come back to it. Make more points than there are marks. OK, if it's a four mark question, you give them six points, OK, because it might be that one of your points just isn't quite good enough or isn't quite full enough, but you've got other points to um, rely on as a kind of like backup points. Now, here I've got a little warning, right? So annoyingly, in some mark schemes, you'll be awarded marks for a point you raise. But if you then make the same point in a very similar question, you might not get the mark. They might have slightly different mark schemes. Sometimes there are reasons to this that maybe you've missed, maybe it's actually asking you a little bit of a different question. 
Other times, there is no reasons to this, and it's highly annoying, and yes, a little bit unfair and frustrating. So, to combat this, you will then go back to making more points than there are marks, okay? Can't reiterate this enough. Four mark question, make six points. If it's an eight mark question, try and make 11 points. But what you must remember though, is time management. It should be a minute and a half a mark, unless you're entitled to extra time, you're gonna to have to add a bit more onto that. So if you've got a four mark question, you need to spend 10 minutes on it. So although you could maybe make loads and loads of extra points, if you start spending 15 minutes on that question, you're gonna run out um, of time for your other questions in the exam. So be conscious of time when you're making more points. Right, let's look at a little example. Now this is from um, key area three of both higher biology and higher human. Um, it's, I'll read it out. Write notes on gene expression in eukaryotes under the following headings. Part one, production of mRNA, five marks. Part two, translation of mRNA, four marks. Already, you should be thinking, right, section one, I'm gonna write a bit more than I do for section two. And just as a side note, see um, where it says in eukaryotes, that's aimed at the higher biologist. Higher human, you don't need to know that term, okay? Higher biologists do need to know that term. This would just be for higher human, just gene expression in general. Right, so we're just gonna have a little look at the mark scheme for that question. Um, what I'd like you to note, first of all, this is the mark scheme only for part one. We'll look at part two in a second. Uh, what I want you to see here is down the bottom, it says maximum five marks. And that should make sense because in the actual question, it says five marks here. So even if you manage to make every single mark there, every single point, there's seven, you can only get a maximum of five. Okay. Um, right, to actually look at these statements here, um, for us to actually think about what they're wanting you to say. Now let's look at statement one first of all. You could get a mark if you said RNA polymerase unzips DNA, or you could say unwinds DNA, or you could say RNA polymerase separates the DNA into two strands. To get the mark, you must have the idea of DNA separating but you've also got to mention RNA polymerase. Now, what you might want to do at this point is pause the video to have a little look down these uh, marks here. Now, if we, I just want to draw your attention to point number three, okay? Where's my little pen? There we go. If we look here, right? I said in my hints and tips, do not use abbreviations, you must use the full names first. Here, it's actually accepted, you just using the, the letters for the basis, so A and U and T and A and things like that. It's accepted that. Doesn't mean you shouldn't listen to my first advice, because remember, my warning is another mark scheme might be accepting different things. So cover your back, always use the first names just, first name, sorry, the full names, just in case. The other thing you'll hopefully have noticed as you look down here, um, there are lots of facts about gene expression that haven't been included. Some of those might be national five level stuff. Don't even bother making uh, points at a national five level. You will not get marks for them. You might want to use it as a slight introduction to get yourself going. However, you're only going to get points awarded for higher level knowledge. In the mark scheme, if there is a oh, fly. In the mark scheme, if there is a forward slash, it means you can say an either or, or if it's actually got the word or, um, or sometimes you might get brackets. And that is just extra information that could be included or might often be said with the statements that they're looking for the points. Now we're going to go on to translation of mRNA. Right, so we'll just look at the mark scheme for the second part and you'll notice in your question it was four marks, so you can only get a maximum of four marks here. So even if you make all the points from A to F, 
you can still only get the four marks. Now, the reason that the mark scheme for part one had numbered the points one, two, three, four, five in numbers, and the mark scheme for part two has uh, lettered the points, this is so that it actually helps your marker when they're marking, because what they'll do is they'll sit with your essay in front of them, and they'll give you a tick when you make a point, and then if it was the if you're getting the mark for statement three, they'll then write the three next to it. If you are getting the mark for statement D, they'll then write the D next to it. This is to help them tally up and see where you're getting your marks from. And this is to help them keep tabs of the maximum five from this section, maximum four from that section. Now, have a little look at the mark scheme here. You might want to pause the video to read through the types of things you could look at. Now, if we have a little look at some of these statements, this is a good example of many points or many marks being awarded for two things. So tRNA has an anticodon and an amino acid site. Okay, tRNA carries amino acids to the ribosome. You must say two, like both of the bits, to get the mark. But it doesn't matter if you say the first bit of the statement in sentence three and then the last bit of the statement in sentence five. Uh, your examiner will be able to match those up and award you the mark. Hopefully this little video will have helped you in how to tackle these extended response questions. Remember it is the start of the year and this is a sort of new thing you're getting asked to do in biology. You're not expected to be brilliant from the start. Some of you will find this a bit easier than others uh, just because of the nature of essay writing. Some of you have to practice a bit more but you'll be getting given extended response questions throughout the year for us to hone in on our skills.